Sometime in the last decade. Of <clears throat> Sometime in the last decade of the 12th century, the shaman Kokochu, known also as Teb Tengri, latched himself onto the rising star of Chinggis Khan. Shamans were very important to the Mongols, and Kokochu was a particularly crafty one. Kokochu was one of the seven sons of Mernlik, who had married Chinggis's mother Alun, uh, sometime after Esugai's death. This made Kokochu stepbrother to Chinggis Khan, a very valuable position. Kokochu had made quite a name for himself in his own right, though, as a shaman, having such a close connection with heaven and the spirit world that he could supposedly walk naked through snowstorms and return with messages from the Almighty. Now, as throughout much of human history, having heaven's backing looks great on your resume. And, the first, and in the first few years of the 13th century, Chinggis was claiming heaven's support as rightful ruler of the steppe tribes. Having a holy man with direct connection to Tengri, the Mongol supreme deity, uh, in turn strengthened Chinggis' claim. Now, whether Chinggis personally believed in Kokochu's divine connection or just found him very useful is hard to tell. Uh, for all of his pragmatic and calculating nature, on occasion he would allow himself to be swayed by shamans or priests, showering them with favor or, and uh, letting them get away with more than he should have. After Chinggis's coronation in 1206, Kokochu certainly had a considerable degree of influence with Chinggis, and he was perhaps getting a bit too big for his britches. After the coronation, Chinggis's Chinggis brother Hazar got into a spat with Kokochu, resulting in Hazar getting beaten up by Mernlik's sons. Hazar complained to Chinggis of his humiliation, who in turn got angry with his brother and shrugged him off. Now, you must remember that Khazar, yeah, Hazar had previously abandoned Chinggis and briefly joined up with his enemies. While Chinggis had forced him back, he didn't necessarily trust or like him. So when the scheming Kirkuchu came to Chinggis with a vision that either Chinggis or Hazar were to rule the Mongols, Chinggis immediately sprung into action and had his brother arrested. Their mother, Ulun, upon hearing about this, rode through the night to confront Chinggis, finding him in the process of interrogating Hazar. While she convinced him to let Hazar go, Chinggis would take away most of the families Hazar ruled over, um, which the secret history of the Mongols tells us gave Ulun such a shock when she heard of this that it led to her death shortly thereafter. Kokochu was not done yet, however. He would go on to take some of the families that belonged to Chinggis' youngest brother, Tamuj, uh, leading Tamuj to personally confront Kokochu and his brothers, who in turn humiliated him and forced him to kneel before them. Temujin then bravely ran away to his big brother, coming to his tent early one morning before Chinggis was out of bed and crying about his treatment. Chinggis' wife Forte cried too, uh, as she saw how Kokochu treated Chinggis' brothers and feared that he would do the same to their children, uh, and was so worried that Kokochu, this awful Teb Tengri person, would tear apart the new empire without Chinggis even noticing. Chinggis Khan, I suspect, was at this point just tired of people complaining about Kokochu, and told Tamuj that, as Mernlik's sons were coming to his tent later that day, Tamuj could do what he wanted with Kokochu. After they arrived, Tamuj re-entered the tent, challenged Kokochu to wrestle, and led him back outside, where three strong men grabbed him, broke his back, and dragged him away. Tamuj then came back into the tent and said, Kokochu doesn't want to fight anymore and won't stand up. <laughs> Mornlik and his sons realized pretty quickly what had actually happened and got so angry that Chinggis had to be escorted outside by his bodyguards. They hid Kokochu's body in a tent and after three days it disappeared and the story became that 
as Kokuchu had dared to battle with Chinggis and his family, heaven had become displeased with him and had taken him, taken him away, body and soul. The message was clear. The only person who truly had heaven's backing was Chinggis Khan, and divine retribution awaited his enemies. Skillfully, Chinggis had turned a potential disaster into excellent propaganda, reiterating his authority and connection to heaven. Now, how much Chinggis personally believed in this is, of course, debatable, but he certainly understood its effect to appear shamanic and holy himself and not have that power resting on another person. Church became a tool of the Mongol state and divine support would lend itself to the Mongol belief in their destiny to rule the whole of the world. <laughs>